I wanted to show you an update to a feature that was added in Descript a while ago. It was beta, but last week it came out of beta, version 100, big milestone, I guess. And that is to do with translation. So let me show you how you can translate a composition in Descript and not only translate it, but also change the voice, dub the voice in that language, if it's supported. Not all languages are supported, but uh, you know, here we go. That's my project right there. This came out of beta last week. So with that, some limitations were introduced. So in Descript, you can now translate a composition from its original language into a new language. And let me show you how to do that. I'm just gonna go to my main composition here in project, and I'm going to pick a little portion of this composition to translate. So I'm selecting this paragraph and I am right-clicking and saying, duplicate to new composition. Here we go. And it creates it here and I can click to open it. And there you go. Nothing special yet. So this is in English now. Let me just rename this one translation demo. All right. By the way, I think it's not available in the free plans. You have to have a creator or higher plan. So you go to Underlord and you go down here and you say translate. Now, before I say that, let me tell you what that does. It's going to translate your composition. It's going to create a duplicate composition in that new language with the new text. And if you choose to dub it, it's going to also put the audio in there. It's going to keep the video and it's going to keep all of the elements that you have on the screen right now. So you can see here, I've got myself and Chris side by side. The problem is this. If you haven't finalized your design, so this is problem number one. If you haven't finalized your design, it's going to duplicate this composition and then translate it into all that. And then if you go back in here and change your mind and you want to add something like add subtitles, maybe add a logo or change the layout, you cannot do that. Okay. It's not going to reflect in the translated version. So this is something maybe it's coming soon. Maybe it's coming in the future or not, but this is a big catch in here because when that duplicated composition is created, it does not maintain an editing relationship with the original composition. And you cannot edit that composition either. So, I mean, I think it makes sense that this should be something in the future. But anyway, here's how it works. If you want any logos, any layout changes, any captions, you need to add them before you translate. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to Elements. And I'm going to just add some, uh, maybe a text. You know, I'm just going to put a text in here. Test, translate. All right, that's my text. So I'm going to just move that in there on the corner in the middle, whatever. Okay, it's too large. And then I'm going to add some captions. Go to captions. And I'm going to just say simple captions with a bit of a waveform in there. There you go, done. There you go. Now. The captions actually show up in English, right? So now I'm done. Let's say this is my final layout. I'm happy with it. Now I can go and translate, all right? So let's go to Underlord and go to Translate. And here is the problem number two. The plans now have limited dubbing, which means if you want to make your voice in French, change your voice to French, you have 30 minutes. I am on the Legacy Pro plan, which is now called Creator Legacy. So I have 30 minutes of dubbing remaining. Okay, after that, you have to upgrade. Now, there's another limitation there. You need to be on the enterprise plan in order to also make corrections to the translation. That's problem number three, okay? So let me show you this. I'm going to try to translate to French. And French is one of the languages that supports dubbing. Now, if you choose something else, like let's say Czech, you know, dubbing is not available in Czech. Okay, let's choose, I don't know, Greek, not available. Okay, so not all languages have the dubbing available, but the translation's working, okay? So I'm gonna go French in here, and now I can enable dub, and it's asking me which AI voice I want to use for the dubbing, okay? So I have trained my voice, Christy version two, or you can use one of the stock voices, which is, you know, these new stock voices come from OpenAI. I believe all of the old ones have been removed. These ones are much more natural. You know, they sound nice, 
more expressive. Okay. So speaker Chris is going to be, because he's the one talking here. Okay. I chose uh, the wrong portion of the video, I guess. I should have chosen one with me. But anyway, let's just use conversational. Henry. And you, by the way, you can preview these. If you play here. Life is like a camera. Okay. Sounds nice. Click on that. I'm ready. So Descript is going to now transcribe, translate this to French, all the content, and then dub it in that voice. Here we go. Submit. So now that takes a while because it, it first it translates uh, the text itself, and then it goes ahead and generates the audio from that. So you click got it, and here we go. This is limitation. Like I said, the text has been translated, and you can read it in French. And you show the original text at the bottom. So usually they break it down into paragraphs. So if you want to control kind of the way the paragraphs are broken, you need to do that before you translate. Okay. But here we go. The translation is done and now it's generating the speech for that portion. And here's the other limitation I was telling you. If you notice that something in here needs to be corrected, you cannot do it unless you are on the enterprise plan anymore. It was available, you know, while it was in beta for people to test and play with it. But now if you want to make changes before the voice is generated, or you want to make changes and then generate again, you can't. <laughs> so I'm guessing the thinking behind this is that this is kind of a enterprise feature, I suppose. So therefore you have to pay more. And that's like $40 a month or $50 if you pay monthly for the enterprise plan, you do get 40 hours of transcription and other stuff, some priority support and this. <laughs> okay. So that's one of the things that you get extra. And what I like is now that the interface was a bit improved. You see at the top here, you've got the French version. So if I go back to the original, it'll switch you back to the English one and back and forth. And you can create as many translations as you like. I'm going to try another one, click new. And I'm going to do a German one right now. And again, German supports dubbing. And I'm going to choose another speaker here. I'm going to choose Oliver. Life is like a camera. All right. Click on that and submit. So it's now going to create a German version of my composition. There you go. Translation doesn't actually take long because it's just text. And now it's generating speech in German for me. So as you can see at the top here, I have now two versions. I've got, well, the original one and French and German. So you can switch between these. And look at this. You can retranslate. You can copy a link to this version. You can export that. So this is how you export that version. When you have a translated version and you go to the top to publish, look, I'm on the German now, so I'm exporting the German version. If I go to language in here, I can say, no, no, no. I actually want to export the French version. I want to export the English version. So you need to watch out for that drop down when you are translating and you want to export that version. You need to switch to it before you export. All right. So there you go. This is quite actually quite nice. Finally, I'm just going to wait for this German one to finish. The German has finished. Now let's preview this. Let's preview the German version. Du musst 1000 Abonnenten haben. Und hier komme ich wieder auf die Abonnenten zurück. Zu der Zeit hatte ich 8000 Wiedergaben. All right, so you can see, because I added the captions beforehand, now they show up, so the design is maintained, okay? So I've got test translating here. If I click on it, there's no way to make changes on that, so that is stuck. That is just my text that I added there manually. And the problem is, look, if I go back to the original version and I delete that, let's say, oh, you know what? I didn't think I was going to translate this and I don't want that title in there. Delete that. If I go back to the, let's say the French version, it's still there. And if I go to the German version, it's still there. So there's no way to remove that. Except if you go to German and you delete. So you delete that translation, you delete that audio. And then you go back to the original one and you retranslate it into that language. That's the only way right now to make changes, visual changes to a composition that has been translated. So let's check the French one. Vous devez avoir mille abonnés. Et là, je reviens à ces abonnés. The nice thing is the audio in the new language 
is synchronized perfectly to the audio in the original version. So if it took you, I don't know, five seconds to say a sentence, the translated sentence is going to be five seconds also. So the entire message is synchronized from beginning to end correctly. <laughs> there was a problem I had because I did a Romanian translation and Romanian, in Romanian, you need to use more words to say the same thing than in English. So there was an English composition. It was saying some, some things, but because the Romanian has to say a lot more, the Romanian was really, really fast to just make sure it catches up and stays within the boundaries of the English one. And likewise, if the new language uses less words to say the same thing, and the AI supposedly finishes before the original person finishes, it's going to extend the words like this, <laughs> which is really funny because uh, I was like, why is it talking like that? And then the next sentence was really fast and then slow again because it's trying to match the timing. So, but that's, you know, if people talk normally, you should be fine 99% of the time. And I've done recently, a, I, I translated an entire five minute, like a video for a conference started out in English and we did it in Spanish with subtitles. It was fantastic. It, it just sounded great and it, it worked great. There it is. This is how you translate a composition to another language and use an AI voice to dub and make it say those words in that language. And I believe if you have more than one speaker, and I'm gonna, this is the last thing I want to show today. If you have a, more than one speaker in your composition, it's going to ask you which speaker you want to use for each one of them. So if I go back to my project, I'm going to go to my main composition, and I'm going to actually copy a portion where we both speak. So I'm going to get a paragraph from here with Chris and one with me. Copy that, duplicate to new. And if I go in there, it's both of us speaking now. If I go to Underlord and I translate, I say, I want to do it in French. Dub, and there you go. You have to choose the speaker for each speaker, right? So for me, I'm going to use my speaker, Christy version two. And for Chris, I'm going to use, I don't know, Ethan, whatever. Submit that. So that's going to now create a French version with two different speakers. So you can see how it breaks the paragraphs in here and just generate speech with those two speakers. 